Welcome to XG Boost Math. This is part 8 of Ensemble Techniques. And in this video, we shall cover the most important mathematical formulations behind XG Boost. There are some prerequisites. First is the Ada Boost Math, which we covered in part 5 video. The Gradient Boost Math, which we covered in part 6, particularly all the 8 steps of the algorithm and the XGBoost concepts which is covered in part 7 of this video series. Let's get started. So the XGBoost is an implementation of optimized gradient booster trees and the 8-step gradient boosting algorithm we discussed in the previous video which is an XGBoost concepts is very much applicable but with a variety of improvements. It is also a regularized model and it measures the complexity of the tree. Now, what that means mathematically is our objective function is going to have two components. First is a training loss, which measures how well the data fits our model. And then the second component is the regularization component, which measures the complexity of the tree. The loss function used by XGBoost is a squared loss, and it's a sum of squared difference between the predicted value and the actual value. There's another thing to note here which is about the trade-off on the optimization is that the objective function will optimize to trade off between the training loss and the regularization loss. loss. And generally when you're optimizing training loss it encourages predictive models for higher accuracy on your training data. However, if you're optimizing regularization, it encourages generalized, simpler models for better suitability for production environments. Okay. So now let's look into the details first on the regularization parameter within XGBoost. And XGBoost uses two parameters to define the complexity of the tree. First is the number of leaves, and the second is an L2 norm of the leaf score. The other parameters, gamma and lambda, in this function are hyperparameters. The overall complexity is defined as a sum of the number of leaves weighted by gamma, which is a hyperparameter, and a lambda weighted L2 norm of your leaf score. Leaf score is also indicated as a leaf weight. Okay. Now later at stage at later stages we will see how W is being computed. But now let's take a very quick example of how the overall omega, which is the regularization parameter, is being computed for a sample tree. So let's assume we have a sample tree with uh, two nodes and then three leaves. In this particular case, leaf 1 has got a weight W1 of plus 2, and a leaf 2 has got a weight of 0 0.1, and a leaf 3 has got a weight of minus 1. The lambda is going to be gamma times 3, because we have 3 leaves, plus half times the lambda times W1 square, plus W2 square, plus W3 square. Okay? Now that we understand how omega is being put together, let's start looking at the other component, which is the training loss component. The training loss can be represented as an additive model, because we are obviously in a boosting space. And in the earlier videos, both in Ada Boost and in Gradient Boost, we saw how the for loops were constructed and how the trees were sequentially added with each other to to finally aggregate a, an ensemble model. Applying the same idea, we can see that this particular loss function can actually be written as the final model, which is y hat of t, is composed of the previous model, which is y hat of t minus 1, plus a new model that we are learning. Okay, So now we can rewrite our objective function in these terms, we're using these terms as an additive model as below. 
Now let's take a look at the next section where we're going to be applying a formulation from mathematics. So I want to introduce you to a theorem in mathematics called Taylor approximation, which is used to approximate well-defined differentiable functions. Taylor approximations say for a function f, just taking a parameter x plus delta x, which is a small unit of x, can be written in terms of f of x and delta x. And the approximation is f of x plus f dash of x, which is representing the first order differentiation of f of x, times delta x, plus half second order differentiation of f of x times delta x the whole square. So that's the approximation given by the Taylor theorem. Now considering we have already defined our xg boost objective function in an additive form, we are now going to be applying the, this particular Taylor approximation for up to two terms and simplify our objective function. Okay, So when we apply it on our objective function, which is what we had in the earlier uh, slide, now what we get is we get a term gi and hi as new terms in the new formulation. The gi term indicates the first order differentiation and the hi term indicates the second order differentiation done for approximating the functions. Okay. Now that we have applied Taylor approximation to the original objective function and got its quadratic form, let's put together both the training loss along with the regularization which we derived earlier. So the training loss we have derived so far is this particular formulation where we have the GI and HI terms and we have earlier done the regularization term which had the number of leaves and the L2 norm of the leaf score. When we put them together, we are obviously going to further simplify it by using capital G and capital H to refer to the summation of all the G's and the summation of all H respectively. Remember, the G's and the H the lowercase g's and lowercase h represent values of each leaf in the tree. However, the, the uppercase g and the uppercase h is now representing the entire tree's structure for this formulation. Now, this particular objective function that we have derived and simplified is a sum of t quadratic equations. For each quadratic function, we now will be able to derive an optimal weight, which is wj, which is what we want to derive. And that wj is simplified as minus gj by hj plus lambda. Now that the optimal wj is derived, we substitute it back into the original objective function and we get a newer objective function without any w's and this objective function shall be called the, the minimum objective function and this is the most simplified form of quadratic approximation of our original objective function okay now let's try and understand how XGBoost grows these trees. First, it's a greedy tree growing algorithm and it starts with a tree with a depth zero. Second, for each node, it will have a, it'll try to add, add a split. So for each leaf node of the tree, let's try and add a split. That's what the greedy algorithm is going to do. And come, with that comes along a small dynamics that we also need to understand is that in this particular diagram, I've shown you one, two, three, four, five different uh, nodes. 
And what is worth noting is that there is an objective function before and an objective function after. And this objective function before is defined before the node 2 was split. An objective function after is defined after the node 2 was split. The objective function before is calculated only with node 1, 2, and 3 because at that point in time, only these three were the leaves in the tree. However, objective after is calculated with node 1, 4, 5, and 3 because these are the leaves now left in the tree. The change in this objective function is calculated using the gain function. Okay. This gain is intuitively similar to how we did gain calculations using Anthropy or Guinea during the addition tree calculations. The gain has a score of the left child plus the right child subtracted by the aggregated score if we do not split. So that's the intuition behind this formulation. And then it is subtracted with a gamma parameter, which is referring to the complexity cost for introducing the additional leaf. Okay. So now that the gain calculation is done, we need to know that XG boost will stop the split if the best split node has a negative gain. And it is also worth noting that we have already seen in the previous video about the sparsity awareness algorithm of XG boost. Okay. So now that we have reviewed the tree building process or the learning the structure process, let's quickly review the overall process for XGBoost. First, let's summarize the algorithm. First, there's a weak learner, f of xi. Then, in a for loop, where t refers to the tall trees to be built, we are creating a new instance of the model, and the tree is built using the previously discussed tree learning algorithm. And then the minimal objective, objective function is used in these buildups, because that is referring to how good the tree structure is. All the new models are additively combined, and the training stops either when T is reached or when the objective accuracy levels are reached to acceptable levels. The final model is an additive combination of all the models built within the loop, and that is the ensembled final XGBoost model. Now that's the overall overview of the summary. And now let's quickly review and recap everything we've covered in this video. First, we saw the basic general objective function and the squared loss function. Then we understood the trade-off optimization built into this function. We reviewed the measure of complexity of the tree. We decomposed the objective function to additive method. Then we applied a Taylor approximation for a quadratic approximation of the objective function. Then we derived the optimal weight and also the minimum objective function, which was the most simplified objective approximation that we could get from our general objective function. Then finally, we reviewed how the structure is being learned or the tree is being built. Okay. Now, in the next video, we will be covering an illustrative example using all the above math on how XGBoost builds these trees, satisfying various formulations we have discussed in this video. Okay. So, until then, good luck to you and stay safe.